talk about bee health, we want bees to have good forage and nutrition, to um, not be negatively impacted by pesticides, and to you know be free of varroa, which carry disease. And so uh, really the, the responsibility lies both with the grower and the beekeeper, the beekeeper to bring healthy hives to, to, the, to the orchards and to uh, specialty crops, and for the grower to have um, uh, a, you know, an orchard or a specialty crop that doesn't have um, pesticides on, on them that can, that can be uh, negatively impacting bee health. We've been using integrated pest management for probably 30 years now. Uh, we, we scout every commodity, whether it's asparagus, cherries, and certainly apples, uh, every week and, and put tremendous value on the scouting reports. Uh, sprays cost way too much to, to just spray by a calendar spray today here. And we don't want to spray unless there's a need to here. Uh, we, we use uh, pheromone ties, mating disruption, and uh, just try to be good stewards here uh, of, of the land here. So. We've had a real advantage with Jim because he truly understands farming uh, and, and knows the importance. I think probably the biggest thing, and for, for any grower uh, and beekeeper, communication is the key, you know, and uh, we all get, when we get to the end of bloom and uh, we may have to uh, apply an insecticide, we, we've got to communicate so that uh, the beekeepers have time to get those bees out the last thing we want to do is, is try to, uh, to hurt any of the bees. It's very uncommon for us to see a whole colony of bees die outright because of pesticide exposure. That's very uncommon. Uh, what is more common is just chronic exposure to pesticides. So over time, the colony gets exposed to insecticides, fungicides, uh, or other toxins, and that can reduce the lifespans of the individual bees and make them more susceptible to their diseases that they have and uh, other pressures and stressors. Bees working around crops can encounter a wide range of products as they forage, which can sometimes add up in a hive to create what Jamie Ostrowski calls a perfect storm. Yeah, so Jamie had some problems with a uh, hive down south, and uh, she had a bunch of tests done, and she had a report. And um, looking at that report, there was herbicides, fungicides, pesticides, uh, not just insecticides on there. Um, that opened my eyes. I didn't realize bees transported all that chemical back to the hive. So the effects that we see are not as um, deadly or dire as a pesticide exposure. Uh, the issue that we see though is that they have a synergistic effect when they're mixed with pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, when they're all mixed together. And the bees don't contact this in just one crop. Because they work two miles, they, they visit every crop in that two mile area and they gather all of these things at once. Um, in general, we don't see a real devastating effect um, from any of these sprays. And the necessity of these sprays to protect our, our food supply and our crops needs to be balanced you know, with the, the fact that the bees are there. Generally, the bees recover quite well from any of these things. Uh, but in this one instance, everything came together to be a perfect storm. Um, and that doesn't, that's not common. For example, in this instance, this, these sprays, I believe were put on early um, in June and my bees had only been there 10 days. So if I know that on an annual basis, these sprays need to be used early in June, I can wait and move my bees in two weeks later and everybody gets what they need in this situation. It, it never adversely affects either side. And I think that's the most important thing to take from this is that by communicating and knowing each other's needs, we can definitely both flourish. Where if we come together in hostility, neither of us are gonna be successful. Most beekeepers um, that I've been, worked with in these pesticide incidents, they're not interested in a, um, they're not interested in pursuing any sort of legal action outcome. They're not looking for somebody to get penalized. They're simply looking to understand what happened um, so we can work towards having that not happen in the future.
Um, that that's you say I, I when I get called out these things the beekeeper is not that even though they've suffered significant you know economic damage hundreds in some cases I've seen oh, upwards of a thousand colonies pretty significantly impacted that's a big hit for a, a you know a, that's a that's a significant uh, impact and even in that case that beekeeper was not looking for financial compensation they were just saying I want to understand how this happened what happened where did this come from so it doesn't happen in the future to me or to another beekeeper.